The defendant used physical force, intimidation, duress, or threats to persuade the victim to engage in sexual intercourse. The victim reacted due to a fear of immediate bodily injury or injury to another person if they did not comply. Today's Victo, California Rape Laws. Why am I using California in my video? Because since the beginning of the filth, it has all been coming out of California. Be it domestic violence laws, feminism, or how the entertainment industry pushes the feminist agenda on the rest of the world. You see, you Americans over there who are sitting in California have no idea that when your TV shows come out, they go out worldwide. And people here in Europe, and people in Russia, and Asia, are laughing at your television shows. Not because of the comedy that's being presented on the show, but the way you all think, and what you all think is funny, is laughed at. Sadly, this junk is coming over our borders, filling our children's heads up with garbage. We are trying to stop it, but some of it gets through. Today, like I said, California rape laws. Let's get into it. So California has said a defendant used physical force, intimidation, duress, or threats to persuade the victim to engage in sexual intercourse. Well, when you read that and you hear physical force, you're like, okay, that's bad. You hear intimidation, okay, that's bad. You don't intimidate a girl to have sex with you. That, that would be rape. But then it comes to the word duress. We all know what duress is. And it must be pretty nice for a girl to go out and have sex with all the guys that she wants to. And when her parents find out what she's up to, that she says, oh, I was stressed into it. Every guy would laugh about that. We think that's, oh, give me a break, girl. How could you be stressed into having sex? But you see, if you do that, you're a misogynist. Not only you're a misogynist, but you actually also broke the law. Because guess what? The defendant used physical force, intimidation, or duress. Duress could be anything, folks. Any kind of stress. And you're labeled a rapist. If you take a girl out on a date, <laughs> you buy her dinner, you take her to a movie, you bring her back to your house, and you want to have sex with her. If you do have sex with her, and she feels like she was intimidated into it, even though that she came up to your house, which is already known, like, okay, you, that something might happen if you go into somebody else's house. So even though she took in all that steps with you and gotten into your house, if she feels like she's stressed, she can call you a rapist. Right there. You don't even have to be raped. You just have to have the duress. So, that's already pretty dangerous, but let's move on down the list. Intoxication by alcohol or drugs impairs the victim to ability, ability to consent. The defendant knew or reasonably should have known about the victim's impairment. So if a woman goes out to a party and has one beer, just one, and she has alcohol in her blood, and she has sex with a man, and later on she didn't like the decision to have sex with a man, she can go to the police, take a breathalyzer test, they'll see that she has alcohol in her blood, and the man is now a rapist. <sighs> Something to think about, guys, when you decide to go out and have sex with a woman. The victim was unconscious, asleep, or otherwise unaware that sexual intercourse was happening. First off, if you're going to a party and you're going to get yourself knocked unconscious by drinking too much, then you pretty much ask for anything that happens to you. And you don't really care about yourself anyways, because if you're going to be unconscious on a floor at some party, you really don't care what happens to you. If you're asleep, hmm, I'm pretty damn sure that any woman that feels a giant penis going up inside of her tiny little vagina would feel that. And if she does not wake up, that's because she's actually enjoying it. But I don't recommend men doing it. The defendant induced the victim to engage in sexual intercourse by making a fraudulent representation. For example, the defendant may have lied about being a public official or threatened consequences if the victim did not comply. <laughs> yeah, I can see this one already. <laughs> I can see some guy already in his car and puts on a siren on top of his car and pulls some woman over, right? And he says he's a local authority and that she has to drop her pants, bend over, let him fuck her. 
I mean, come on. Where, where's the logic in this? Where is any logic of a woman going, wait a minute, you want me to blow you? You cannot be a real officer. Officers don't want me to blow you. Officers don't want me to have sex. So, this is a funny one. The defendant induced the victim to engage in sexual intercourse by making a fraudulent repeat. I can't even read this properly without laughing. For example, the defendant may have lied about being a public official and threatening consequences if the victim did not comply. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, man, come on. <laughs> this is the insanity of feminists. I mean, they actually think that this happens on a daily basis. This is what happens when you watch too much television and you actually believe that television is reality and reality is, is some kind of fantasy. How about we all start living back in reality again where we start realizing that the TV shows we're watching are purely toxic. The, the telephones that we buy actually poison our brain and lead to brain cancer. That tablets... At the creator of tablets, you know, even like Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs didn't even want his children to have a tablet because he knew that the battery inside of it is pretty much poisonous when you hold it in your hand or have it on your lap or whatever you do with it. He didn't let anybody in his family have a tablet. Uh, yet he doesn't mind selling them to the mass public out there. Genocide much? <laughs> I'm sorry, but this world is absolutely crazy, man. I mean, you go out in public today, and you actually see people walking with their telephones in their hand, like, beep, 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 beep. They smack it through a telephone pole or whatever, and they don't even seem to care what they're doing. I mean, I'm actually hearing it on the news lately, too, that people are actually getting hit by cars because they're crossing the road without even looking left or right anymore because they're too busy talking to Johnny on their telephone. What the fuck? <laughs> people getting parking tickets. I mean, not parking tickets, getting driving tickets because they're driving and typing on their phone at the same time. And nobody seems to understand that these tablets are designed to make you a narcissist. These phones are designed to make you a narcissist. That fa Facebook is completely designed to make you a narcissist. That's the internet. It's really out there for the psychopaths and sociopaths out there that have no lives. I mean, think about it. A, socio -person, a sociopathic person loves to be camouflaged. They love not to tell you who they really are. Well, that makes the internet the greatest place in the world for them. They like to stalk, they like to harass. Well, that's a great place to do both of those. The internet is mostly filled with psychopaths and sociopaths. That's the truth about it. People that isolate themselves from the real world and they hide behind the computer all day. So, with that said, let's go back to the California rape laws. I gotta say this again. I think this is quite funny. I think the duress is really quite funny. And that, that I mean, that just basically labels every man a rapist right there with duress. Because uh, you take a woman to your house, you, you bring her into your door, you, you take her jacket off, you give her a glass of wine, and then uh, you spill the wine by accident or something like that, and it goes over her clothing. Now she's stressed out. Now you're a rapist. <laughs> she doesn't actually have to have intercourse with you to label you a rapist. I mean, I don't know if you all heard that story about the taxi driver in, Cali uh, in Canada with the two women and the, uh, the three women in the back of his car with the cigarette. He uh, videotaped, uh, he was lucky enough to put a video camera inside of his car and taped the whole uh, thing that was happening, but three women got in the back of his car, and one woman light up, lit up a cigarette, and he asked her to put it out, and she refused to put it out. So he pulled over the car and said to all three of them, get out, get out, get out, get out. You don't want to put your cigarette out, get out. But instead of getting out, they started saying that he uh, tried to rape them. And uh, he was lucky enough to videotape everything that was actually going on, um, uh, so basically, these three women <laughs> grouped up together as one unit to bash one man who was driving a taxi, all because they didn't want to put out the cigarette and pay him $11 for the fee that they already owed because they were sitting in the car and he drove for a little while. So that really should show you right there the mentality of females right now. And this is also why I do not believe that Bill Cosby has anything to do with this rape accusation. I know for a fact that when one, female ta uh, when one female bites onto a man, other females bite on them too. They're a pack. I mean, the fact that, <laughs> that, the fact that Bill Cosby has 20 people on him right now should show you exactly how innocent he really is. If it was one woman or two women, that would have changed the whole entire situation. But now it's 20 women right now, all making false allegations against him. Which proves my point that females work in packs Therefore, the, brother, the brotherhood should also work in a pack. And I am one of those brothers out there that are spreading the secrets of females around out there so every man can wake up. This is Wardrobe's Fire. See you all later. Bye-bye.